Yo, voice of power had to be. Talk to me. Voice of power right here. This young man has been putting it down for years. It's not something he does. It's something he lives, you know, and it was implanted in him uh, before he was a seed. This is epigenetics handed down through generations, through his bloodline, through his DNA, this knowledge, this wisdom, and this information. We are the sum accumulation of all that came before us, and he is a great representation of that. He took these tools, learned it. He pushes us to think ahead. He pushes us as a community and as individuals to live on a higher frequency. These are terminologies and words that we've used throughout our stint here on Sway in the Morning. And this man has been um, 10 toes down. Uh, he doesn't waste words. He doesn't waste energy. He's the author of the best-selling book, T Paradigm King Solution-Based Mind Reprogramming Book. He's spoken on many shows and many platforms, and he's celebrating his born day, May 4th at the Apollo Theater in Harlem for the highest level tour. I want to welcome him to the show. I call him my brother because he's from the soil we met. He reminded me years ago, and he handed me a hoodie, and I threw that hoodie on just to represent what he was about, and I finally got him on the show. Oh, the man. one and only, I'm going to say iconic, 19 Keys is oh, here. Man. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, man, Tracy G. Yup, I'm excited for this. Man, it feels amazing. Tracy's oh. right behind you yeah, in she, New York. She's in New York. Shout out to What's up, Tracy? 19? Uh, Blessings. Uh, DB, uh, the whole crew are here, man. You're from Oakland, California, right? Yes, sir. Born and raised. I was born in St. Louis. I moved when I was two. Two years old. Yes, sir. You're from Oakland. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> what part? What part of the town you grew so up? So we grew up on 24 Telegraph. You know what I'm saying, Hotel, but North Oakland, right? But we uh we lived in um West Oakland. That's West. Yeah, West. Oakland. And then we also, I mean, I lived on every side of Oakland. Okay. You know what I mean, so you familiar with Oakland? Uh, my pops was at you know like you're a black Muslim bakery yes. and things of that nature. Uh -huh. And so, you know, our uh environment and upbringing was a little different. You know, like we wasn't in the the category of the streets per se because we was with the Muslims. Okay. You feel me? So it was a more militant situation going on. But then when we lead that then that's where we would get more of that street experience as I moved with my brother throughout Oakland. You didn't go to P Oakland Public Schools, though. I went to Tech for a year. Okay. You know what I mean? That was the only school I went to, but they had Elijah's Educational Center when I was younger. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I went there. I used to go to the uh, bakery uh, in North Oakland, Dr. Yusuf Bay. Mm -hmm. You know, did you guys, uh, there, there was a kinship in uh, with that? Uh yeah 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 so my father at one point in time he was a captain of that organization uh -huh. you know so if you're familiar with Oakland uh and you're from Oakland then you know about your black Muslim bakery it had a um you know bad downfall uh -huh. but during the 40 year tenure that it was there you know it was probably one of the first black owned vegan restaurants ever yes you know what I'm saying and probably in America right uh -huh. um and then if you was in Oakland, you would see like black men, all black motorcades, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, driving through Oakland, 10 cars deep, hopping out, drilling in every hood, yeah. right? And so the dynamics and the paradigm of growing up in Oakland for me was different because I seen black men with money and power. Yes, growing up. Give that a round of applause. I did. I saw him too, Heather. <laughs> you wasn't there. I was there. <laughs> uh, so uh, real briefly, what was your roadmap or your journey to understanding and seeking knowledge? You know, Growing, given the fact that I was uh, born in the household, right, where my mother and father had knowledge, they told me at an early age that you were God. And that probably early on developed as a complex. And then later on, I developed an understanding, like okay. a protocol to it. Like, you got to have some knowledge yourself. You have to be willful. You have to have the ability to execute. So I, I feel like my life has always been a journey of understanding that idea that they have been instilled into us since we were children. Mm -hmm. And that was to give us a filter on the world, right? Because in the world you go deal with devils, right? In the world you gotta have strategies because you gotta have daily wars that you go through, uh -huh. right? We had multiple cases. We, we we grew up in the hood, so you know you gotta fight. You gotta be in different situations where you can get killed. And then you gotta figure out how can, uh, specifically for myself, how can you maintain the integrity and authenticity of your own soul and then figure out how to go outside and be successful, Yeah. right? And I never looked like I had limitations because if you told me I was a god, then that means I can do anything. Yes. Right? So that's how I would think about the world, to where it's like whether I'm in a situation with the police or whether I'm trying to get a job, right, or I'm going to start a business. I will always think about, like, 
if if I say I am who I am, then I have to prove it. And the only way I can prove it is to get the knowledge and then use that information and execute it and, and generate something for myself. When you speak about that knowledge, because we, we and I hear this conversation specifically, what are some of the books, teachers, or tools that helped you craft this philosophy and gain that knowledge? Uh, it's been so many, of course. We always start with the foundation, okay. right? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? I always tell hey, black men around the world, people always ask me what books to start with. It has to be Message to the Black Man. Okay. Um, go through that same journey. Everybody loves Malcolm X, but they don't want to go through his journey. Yeah. Right? You don't want to go through that redevelopment journey and changing those patterns. So we always start with Message to the Black Man. And Fall of America is very important these days because you see the fall of currency. You mm -hmm. see the world actually coming to the fruition of the prophecies that he laid down in that book and those foundations. But I study everything from psychology, from marketing, philosophy, from physics, right, spirituality. I want to always be well-rounded and well-versed in many different subjects because they connect. Yes. Right? It's like most of the things that we do today, you know, you look at, uh, let's say, um, like I've been studying Edward Bernay, right? right? He's a psychologist that really developed PR in this country, uh -huh. right? Which started off as a term for propaganda, but he thought it was too harsh. But what he did was he changed society from a needs-based society to a desire-based society. So he got us buying products such as like getting women to smoke and getting people to eat bacon in the morning. Uh -huh. These were all his propaganda strategies that he put together so that they can sell more products for corporations. Right. So I always want to understand the social construct and the reality of it. So I like to go to the root of information. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I can be a master like those who mastered the world. I love this. 19, 19 keys is here. Um, there's so many questions I want to get to uh, mm -hmm. and, and just listening to some of your teachings. I want to ask you this. How important is word sound power, being intentional and having understanding and connections and true meaning to words, how you use them, how you say them? How important is that? It's everything. You know, you, if you see right now, they got AI. It's a language model. Yeah. Right? And that language model, they believe, is changing the entire world because mm -hmm. words are worlds. Right? Like, what we say is connected to who we are. We have a metaphysical bond with our words. Mm -hmm. Right? If we speak, I always say every level of consciousness comes with a new language. Right? The poor man doesn't speak the same language as the rich man. The rich man don't speak the same language as the wealthy man. Right. The wealthy man don't speak the same language as the Saudis with the oil. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's levels to it. And even within our English language. Right. There's levels to, you know, tonality and speaking confidence. Right. When you walk in a room, because when you exert that, then you create a mirror where everybody else has confidence within you as well. Yeah. Then there's difference between the person being honest and truthful with their words. Right. Right now we have that thing where everybody want to whisper the truth. Nobody want to speak it loud. Right. So being somebody that's bonded with who you are and connected to your core values. Now you speaking from a place that's directed from your soul. Right. And when you speak from your soul and you speak it with spirit. Right. Then that translates and that wakes up everybody else's spirit. Right. So you can take a man that has been mentally dead and hasn't been awakened for a long time and you can speak a truth and it sparks him like, yeah, Damn, what you just say? That was deep. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and for the first time in a long time, he actually feels alive. Right. So. Words are very powerful, but at the same time, we have an issue with learning how to listen, uh -huh. right? And you cannot be a great communicator unless you learn how to listen, right? And some people are only one point of the conversation aware. They want to get their point across, but they're not really examining, observing, yep. and listening and studying. So when you actually speak and you respond, right, you're actually doing it to be understood, yeah. right? And so I try to speak from a place of being understood, not just to be heard. Man, 19 Keys is here because uh, I only got you for so long. I'm trying to wow. get as much information out of you as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and a lot of uh, these understandings growing up in the same region is uh, a lot of teachings that I learned along the way. And I had to learn how to divvy out these teachings because I've been in the game a lot longer uh, than a lot of the folks that are in the forefront right now. And when you say so we tend to whisper the truth, we we... We did how to kind of manage how we told the truth and mm -hmm. which what amount of dosages, you know, the wake up show uh, with King Tech and I that started in the Bay was a double entendre because it was, came on so late at night. We wanted to wake people up, but we wanted to wake people 
up. Right. You know what I mean? With information. Well, you know, they're trying to make woke mean something different well, these days. Yeah, man. I, and, uh, and, and that's interesting to me, too, you know, because I know Governor DeSantos in Florida said this is the place where woke comes to die. Yeah. You know, what are your thoughts about that? That's white woke. Okay. It's different. But see, the way they utilize woke now, it's an interchangeable word. Mm-hmm. Right? So, you know, it could be nigga, it could be gay, it could be whatever they want it to mean, but they utilize the word woke so they don't have to say it. Mm-hmm. But those who understand the context and the connotation connected to it, it's a clever use of language. Now, we use it of, for the exact opposite. Right. We use it for saying that, no, you have awareness and understanding of what's going on in the matrix and the programming of the world. Uh Right. So it's like a person is woke about eating. They on the Dr. Sebi Elijah Muhammad diet. Right. So they know that you don't eat bacon and you don't eat certain things for yourself. And you understand gut health and what they putting in the food that's not good for us. You understand that there may be fluoride in the water or something. That was the understanding of woke, understanding that the government has real programs that they implement. Right. Such as, you know, Jagger Hoover. Right. With the files of the FBI and how they infiltrated every single black organization, whether they was actually a threat to any violent group at all. Right. That's what they did. And so being woke and having information and not means you're not asleep or what's going on around you. You don't have your eyes or your mind closed. Yeah, so it's different. Woke is a good thing, okay. at least in our connotation. In our connotation, it's a good thing. AI is a good thing. That's some, You're a proponent of that. Often I see you talking about AI and um, the necessity that we grab hold to it to understand it. Do you believe that AI will, uh, or not, that AI will become conscious? So I want to I wanna, uh, position that because... Somebody asked me that the other day, like, why are you pushing AI? And I'm not. I'm teaching it. It's different. Okay. Mm. Right? So I'm making people aware of it because there's good and bad with everything, right? Like, when we look at AI, probably like five, six years ago, I was teaching people about AI, how it would steal people's jobs, how it was going to come, how it was going to take over things. Everything that's happening now was already, you know, something that I've been a thought leader on for a while because I like to keep us educated because when technology comes, we're never at the forefront. We're always at the consumer end, yep. and then we complain about when those who are currently at the top level take over it, but we had that same opportunity like 1995 when the internet came, uh-huh. right? But we weren't there in that internet boom because, you know, we had so many other things to focus on, right? During that time, you had the Million Man March. We were trying to make atonement in our communities. So we weren't able to take advantage of the social media boom and create Jeff Bezos to where he was able to create digital libraries off the internet. So when I look at AI, AI can be a great thing in the sense of using it for business efficiency, uh-huh. right? Everybody should be studying and putting those hours in so that, you know, staying advanced on technology means that you're not doing things in yesterday's ways yeah. mm. when there's a better way to do it today, uh-huh. right? But at the same time, we know that, you know, artificial man creates artificial things so that he can maintain artificial power. So you got artificial intelligence, artificial insemination, artificial ingredients. Those are the AIs, but we got ancestral intelligence. Yes. So you got to be able to tap back into the principles of being a man and a woman and that natural intelligence that makes you who you are because the greatest technology can be around, but if you don't have that creative agency on how to use it, mm-hmm. right, this is the most dangerous thing because, you know, when they talk about it being conscious, you can't really fear AI. It's just doing the things that human beings can already do. Yeah. That's it. Uh Everything about AI is based on natural intelligence. So what am I fearing? Myself? Uh You fear the fact that you may not develop yourself in those areas and they have a machine that would do it. Right? So it's the same way you fear somebody smarter than you taking your job. AI ain't going to take your job. Somebody that uses AI will. Right? And so I believe that it can be a good thing in the sense to where black people have always had complaints in the world. Right. What about when technology comes that eliminates those complaints and create solutions for them Uh like media? Right. I got a show. We got about 30 million views, high level conversations. Yeah, and hold up, hold up. Just don't just say that and not get to that acknowledgement. Oh, yes. You hear that? <laughs> 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 you saw it, wait, 30 million? Yes, yeah, so we've been working. Okay, that's, there you go. All yeah, right. Shout out to the team, man. Shout out to Mechie, Steve, EYL. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, they used to say that, you know, people ain't interested in high level, people ain't interested in consciousness, all that woke. And it's like, nah, you're just not doing it right. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? They're not interested in from somebody who's corny, right? So. At the end of the day, man, we give you those elements, but we go do it at a high level. 
Everything got to be high level right now. High you know what level. I'm saying? Like, the information already out there, so it ain't just me giving you something new. I'm reminding you of who you are and what you know and what you need to do. And then we go put it at a high level the same way they put ignorance at a high level. Because they'll take a production value of an ignorant rapper and they put millions behind it. But we go say we got the solution to some higher consciousness and only put a couple dollars behind it. Mm -hmm. Right? So comparatively, a person don't want to take their Netflix time and listen to you. Right, because now it feels like I'm doing something of a lower level. No, nah, so we changed the game and we put in, you know, consciousness and knowledge and information in an entertaining, high level, productive way. How can people uh, come see the high level tour that you're doing? Oh, the man, highest level tour. Up. The what highest is, level. Yes. Yeah, so the highest level tour it starts on my born day. You know, it's tour season and everything. You know, some of the greatest individuals on the planet Earth are tours. <laughs> yes. Michael Mix, Mr. Farcon, you know, myself. You know, Dane Dash, you know, the, yeah. we rule the communication sphere. So May 4th at the legendary Apollo Theater, um, we will have the kickoff of the tour. And then after that, we're going all across the nation and then we're going to take it global. Right. So you can go to 19keys.com slash tour and get you some tickets ASAP. 19keys.com slash tour. Get your tickets now. 19 Keys is with us. He's from Oakland. You watch basketball, I'm assuming. Mm hmm. Can you tell Heather why you a Warriors fan? Oh, boy. Heather, no. Come on, Heather. <laughs> I love you, Heather. You got to know why I'm too, person but is a Warriors No, fan. tell me why. You, you, I don't got to know. Have you ever seen Curry before? Yeah. I mean, I've been a Warriors fan since the We Believe when they had the Black Expos back in the day. The you know what I'm saying? Expo. With the Warrior man. It's like, stop agreeing. You just... <laughs> I'm just, it's just, we having an Oakland moment. This That's Oakland all moment. it is, but I have to keep being exposed to Oakland moments, you know? Well, you know, they call it the Warriors, you know? you know what I'm saying? That energy that come from, you know, like, like I, I, I think Oakland, we got the greatest name out of any team in the NBA, the That's Warriors. True. That's true. The Warriors. <laughs> like, shout out to the Lakers, but what? it's a Laker and it's a Warrior. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. And I love the Lakers. The sure. Lakers started in Minnesota. That's why. Yeah, that's after you're yeah. a warrior in your heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> Y'all don't even play there no more. <laughs> whatever. whatever. But, yeah, that, was, that was a low blow. That was I'm, a low no, blow. I'm, I'm gonna let, yeah, yeah, we still healing from that one. Come on. We are still <laughs> healing from that one. <laughs> what do you feel the current state of hip-hop in relation to the black community um, is consciousness and self-mastery? What do you feel like the current state is? I think it's in trouble. Mm -hmm. Um I think, you know, I forgot who was saying it, but they were saying for one of the first times in history, hip hop is not really giving us the instructions on how to live better, mm -hmm. right? It's not mm -hmm. a representation of consciousness on a daily basis, right? Hip hop has always been influenced in some sense re-adding those core values, revolting against the establishment, right? Now it's so much controlled by capitalism, right, that everybody is making records for money, right? Nobody's doing it for the people, for the culture, right, for the movement. And so hip hop is in trouble of not being hip hop anymore. And it's just being another music genre that's out there and the core values of hip hop has disappeared. Specifically, let's say it like this, right? You know, I specifically have been able to maneuver strategically and, you know, be able to get on platforms like yourself uh, or like uh, Sway in the Morning Show, yeah, one yeah. of the greatest in the world, right? Thank you, brother. Um, but there's a documentary out by uh, about, um, what's the young brother from Chicago? Um, King Von, right? King Von, okay. Where they allegedly say he's a serial killer. But we have such a death culture in hip-hop, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you can come in hip-hop and be a murderer, a killer. You can talk literally that I kill people, right? And you will be put on. You will be blasting in every media outlet. That's hip-hop. That's currently what the state of hip-hop is. It's sex, fast money, and death culture. Mm -hmm. Right? So... That's not all of it, right? But the independent artists that don't get they shine, they're not taking over the radios, right? Because they don't have the payola, right? Or they don't meet whatever criteria, standards, or understanding strategies on how to break into the industry. So I believe that currently it has to be an independent movement that rises up, yeah. right? You got my brother Ampu, Jack Hiller Class. You got your La Russells, your, your Symbols in the world. You got your, uh, what's that, Coast Contras in the mm -hmm. world, AJ McQueen's. Toby you and I mean? yeah, yeah, Toby. Mm -hmm. You know, you got some solid individuals but it's like once we see something that we like we have to support it yeah right like i tell people my tour is not just my tour it's proven that we in a new time we in a new culture yeah like we can have different things that we do for entertainment we can go somewhere and not just go to a club but we can go somewhere and have a transformational experience right we go in there we learn we had a great time we vibe and we left like that's a new culture 
So right now we have a low level culture. We know our top five rappers, but not our top five core values. Yeah. And culture is built on its core values, uh -huh. right? Where's the family? Where's the respect? Where's the responsibility? Where's the integrity that's built into it? So right now our culture is built on capitalism. So anybody can cap for capitalism and people will put them on. <laughs> 19 <laughs> Keys, Tracy G, he used a, um, a phrase that you, you used earlier this year, in, um, earlier this week when we were talking about AI. Yeah, ancestral intelligence. Uh, 19 okay, you keys. Yup, yeah. uh, bro. Yes, I am. Uh, two things. One, I feel incredibly fed, and you just gave us an appetizer, bro. I'm just very appreciative of the knowledge you. you have gained, the awareness that you already had, but you expanded, um, and the knowledge that you seeked and you're given and you're serving to us. Second, what Sway says with the ancestral intelligence. Uh, that came in conversation with Jadena, who is such a multifaceted human. I can't stop at just multifaceted artist. And a lot of our conversation had touched on polyamory. And something mm. I'm, I'm noticing, at least within my circles, is a lot of the most conscious, those who are just like sliding on the highest frequencies, lean towards polyamory. <laughs> and we've also seen that monogamy was presented as a core value for a lot of folks. Mm. Why do you think it is that when people start um, awakening, a lot tend to lean towards polyamory? I think it's um, when you look at America, right, and you look at the constructs of America, everything in America is our Western experience, right? Coming out of slavery, for those who are African descendants of slaves, some of us are Native Americans that's from here, right? A lot of the way we think about love, the way we think about family, the way we think about life is all from a Western experience and education. It's for us to assimilate into this particular country so that we can fall under the social contract of this country, right? So that we can adhere to the laws of the land, right? Like, right now, if, if, if you look at polyamory or polygamy, we have a situation where we have gay marriage. Men can be with men and women can be with men, women now. So I don't really have an issue with people who take that up as far as, you know, a man decides he want to be with multiple women. But also you got to understand that that sort of lifestyle is only for the 1%, right? And I say that because, you know, most of us can't afford to be with two women. Now, people take it on because when you expand your mind and you start thinking from a global conscious perspective, right, you may not take on Western perspective, right? You may take on Nigerian perspective, Right, I believe 38% of marriages out there are polygamous. Uh -huh. Right, you may take on Indian; they have it to where there's arranged marriages. Right, you 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 may do something like they do in Brazil, and they have a high percentage of cohabitation. People are looking at the global landscape, and they're now deciding that there's new relationship constructs that they can go for. If we look in America, 50% of marriages, you know, fail and end in divorce. Right, and now one of the higher percentages that we see rising is interracial dating. Right. And so you have this new pool of, you know, this global diversity. Everybody's taken from each other's culture. And this is what people who have done that started to develop their consciousness. They started to look outside the construct of America for solutions for what our ancestral tenets and practices was. And it's possible that, you know, when you look at all concentrated groups of melanated people all throughout the world, besides probably Brazil, they practice polygamy. Uh -huh. Right. So it was an option for practice. Right. In Islam, you know, a man doesn't just practice polygamy, but it was given as an option in particular circumstances. Right. And I look at the way the world is. We're practicing polygamy and polyamory already, just not legally. Right. So it's the it's the one relationship status that's illegal in this country. But I think that it's more so from a holistic standpoint that we just reprogram reprogramming ourselves and saying what works. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fathers back in the 20s and 30s, they had multiple families. They just couldn't get married and couldn't let both of them know. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But I think that we have to figure out what's a healthy dynamic. And when it comes to relationships, a lot of us have too much trauma and shadow work to do in order to be in relationships with multiple people because people are in toxic relationship with themselves. Mm. Right. And so you got to go back and repattern yourself and reparent yourself as a child. And when you don't see healthy conditions and relationships in a household, how can you believe in monogamy when your parents were separated? Your parents got divorced. You grew up with domestic violence. Right. The reason that people was instilled to really believe in monogamy is because of Disney and the movies and romanticism and things of that nature. But those was Roman antics. That didn't say that that's African. Uh -huh. Right. So when we look at systems that may work for us, it's important, like Dr. Nori said, you know, 
beyond the choice of choosing, you know, the most important choice is choosing believing God. And the second is choosing you will spend the rest of your life with. Right? I believe that a man is more powerful with a woman. A woman is more powerful with a man. So choosing that partnership is very key. And figuring out how to create a healthy dynamic with one person is key. Because there's no way that Sway got a bad relationship with Heather B. And now we're going to pick up a third partner. That don't make sense. No, y'all got to get this thing figured out. Yeah. Then we talk about expansion. Because a relationship is a business. It's a partnership. That's why you got to put legal documentation. Y'all come under a different tax status now, mm -hmm. right? And so when you're thinking about those arrangements, you have to first think about, okay, what works and what will work for nation building? Because we're so individualistic that we think about what works for us, not work for we. Mm. Yeah, and it took us a long time to find our peace and harmony. <laughs> That's why you hate us. <laughs> <laughs> hate us. Uh, man, 19 Keys and said, I'm loving, I'm only hating that we got to... Uh, um, yeah, bring it to an end. Not enough Damn, time, bro. so you got to come back. This is just a prelude. Yeah. yeah, this is a prelude to a bigger conversation. Uh, when you come to New York, come sit and, and talk Most with us yes, a lot please. longer, man. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, the third eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, what does it take, in your opinion, to activate or and in, in, or decalcify? Mm. Um, Come on, the Sway. The third eye. Okay. Sway with the high Come levels. on, Sway. Yeah. No, now, 19 Keys, you know where I'm from. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and these are conversations. That's why we called it the Wake Up Show yes, sir. back in 1990. <laughs> yes, sir. That we were having back then. Yes, sir. Right? You might have been the kid minister back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which folks may not you know, yeah. know that That path. was Baby Keys. That you was the Baby Keys, right? <laughs> uh, can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, when people talk about the third, I think most people don't realize it's a physical thing as mm -hmm. well, right? As mm -hmm. a, as well as a metaphysical thing. It's that pineal gland, right? When you're talking about understanding your brain, most people don't understand their brain. They don't know their neocortex or the hypothalamus gland and what regulates mood and the left and right brain and different hemispheres. So it's a very practical thing in my essence, right? It's the detoxification, right? Because that calcification as when it's that calcium buildup. Right. And so when you're talking about detoxifying yourself from heavy metals and things of that nature, now you allowing your body to be restored. The first thing I would say people need to do is fast. Regenerate the system. Wake up in the morning and get you some sun. Reset that circadian rhythm. Right. And that's the peak hours of the sun, maybe between like six to eight before it gets to that high ultraviolet radiation. You view that, it'll reset your body to be in tune with its natural, you know, state the same way a flower is, right? We have different cycles that our bodies go through. The same way a woman has a cycle, we have what you call ortradian cycles, where we have different peak cycles throughout the day where we can be at top focus, right? That's why if you're working more than 90 minutes, you may need a rest, right? Mm -hmm. But we go past that, and our brain is overworked all of the time, right? So at the same time, you want to do things like tap in and drink some gold water, right? So gold water is colloidal gold. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to re-electrify your brain. You want to drink plenty of water. You want to stay away from low vibrational, you know, not only foods, people, music. All of these things lower your vibration to be in that low state to where you're not in higher consciousness, which would be like gamma versus like beta. When you first wake up, you're in that beta state. You understand me? That's why they call some men beta males. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? They not high energy. Mm. Right. So, you know, going through that process of eating the right foods, of having the right rhythm and cycles throughout your day. Right. Listening to some binaural beats. Right. To where you retraining your brain and you putting it at that high level. All of these things will start to do it. But more importantly, is what you put in your mind as well. So the knowledge that you take into. Right. So you have to be reading books of higher consciousness so that your brain can be activated and stimulated in those areas. Mm. But most of the world you know, most of the music that's made today is decal or is calcifying music. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Calcifying it, music. It's, it's music that's going to trigger you. It ain't music that's going to have you in a zen state. Like, you want to meditate. You want to work out. Right? You want to do all those things. But most importantly, you want to do the shadow work. Yeah. Yes. You, you want to do that. Where you get that gold water from? Oh, man, you can get that from gold. Water.com, G-O-L-D-E, water.com. You know, we be on the shrooms, yeah. not the psychedelics, but we be on the lion's mane, the cordyceps. That's what I got in here I've been sipping, man. Okay. That keeps me on that high level. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Reactivate the brain, remyelinate, and regenerate the nerves and things of that nature. Let's you know, we, 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 we like only like one plant in our culture, and that's weed. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't got more herbs. Yeah. We be talking about how sacred Bruh. this is. What about the other million? How y'all just go <laughs> exclude them from the conversation? <laughs> what you know what I'm saying? Like, 
if we gonna talk about Mother Nature, man, talk about all her children. You mm. feel me? Tap in. Mm. Tap in. Nineteen keys, man. Get his brother a round of applause, <laughs> man. We've been, you know, let me get Madam uh, CJ on the line. She's been waiting to say something. Madam CJ, how you doing? Madam CJ, how you feeling? Madam CJ, uh, and Barbara, how y'all living? Uh, good morning, to everybody. I'm, I'm such a fan of the show. I, I love each. What up? Good morning. Y'all. Peace, peace, peace. For sure, for sure. I love you, have I love your your your, your straight talk. You you be getting these folks off the phone, so I'm gonna make this real quick. Um, I just want to say, <laughs> 19 keys. You that dude. Uh, I just want to say happy birthday. We birthday twins. Oh, thank uh, you. I was, thank uh, you. Okay. May the fourth be with you. Find out that you. Were Oh man, for sure, for sure, may the four be with you. You dig? So yeah, I just wanted to say happy birthday. Um, God bless you. Uh, I'm upset you're not coming to Atlanta, but I'm gonna go book. Uh, we got Invest Fest. We gonna be there. We got a few things lined up. Oh yeah, yeah, I did see that, and I saw that price too, and I was like, ooh. But I, I think I'm gonna do that VIP. <laughs> you got a few months. You got a few months. Ooh, ooh we. A, a few months of listening to you know how we teach the game on skill sets, financial literacy. You know, a few months of listening to some Market Mondays, Wall Street Trapper, Aristotle Investments. They teach you some skills to pay the bills. <laughs> fact, fact, fact. Okay. After all that I see, Aristotle posted he gonna be on it yesterday and everything. So I just want to yeah, shout out to like, Aristotle, Honeybee God University. bless you, okay. and all I bless you. You know, hey, shouts out to you, shouts out to the morning show. Thank you guys for letting Thank me hold you. this. Thank you, you citizen, Madison, Madison CJ. I love you guys. You Let's go. go. We love you too. It's three in the morning. Snee, Snee in New York. Make it quick. Say what up to nineteen keys. Go ahead. Hey, hey. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Quick question. We, we made the comment about calcified music, and we, you know, our community always complains about how we don't play the positive music to elevate our mindset. Why are we still just complaining and not making the move to actually put that in rotation? Well, I think complaining feels good. It makes us feel like we're doing something. But I think we at this time where independent music can grow just by individuals listening to it. It doesn't even have to be uh, on the radio to do it. You understand? We see people like La Russell and we see people building their communities up. So I think it's up to the listener and the fans to build that base up. There you go. Right? Like right now, it's all about communities. You know, you got Web3 is about people taking their intellectual property and ownership, right? And they learning how to capitalize by going direct to community and consumer. So for me, like I listen to my little brothers on a daily basis. So when they when they got their spins, that's me in there, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to hear good music, listen to good music and that's how it grows. Yes. And then when they put together shows, show up for it. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So that they can actually make revenue so they can continue to grow. Right. Black media, black music, good music, it only grows if it has investment, if there's people buying into it, right? Like, I just got my first black sponsor for High Level Conversations, and that's 30 million views later. But we had to teach people, like, it's important that if you don't invest in black media, it can't grow. They got to put out the gossip and entertainment shows because that's the only way they're going to get ad dollars for it. Yeah. Same thing with rappers. The only way they're going to be able to grow, you don't want to keep the artists broke because they put in our information as high vibrational. No, I support it. You know what I mean? To be proud to pay like Nipsey said. There you go, Snee. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your call. You a citizen. Sweet in the morning. One more because Zuri's from Oakland. Go ahead. Talk to him, Zuri. Hey, Z. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Zuri. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, go ahead, Zuri. 19 Keys is here. Go for it. She lost connection. Oakland. Zuri, I can hear you, Zuri. No. <laughs> you connected. Oh, Zuri, I just you can't say hello. Hello, Sway. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you. I'm with our brother, yes. 19 Keys. Yes. I, I just, you know, I'm just in awe of everything that he's speaking. I'm just, you know, born and raised in Oakland myself. Um, I'm not an Ojai player, but my sister was, Sway. <laughs> Oh, okay. And oh, wow, um, cats. this is just a beautiful thing. Absolutely. And that and that message well, is so enough much. in itself. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We appreciate you, Zuri. You're a citizen. That's way in the morning. Okay, give it up for 19 Keys, y'all. Come on, Woo! man. My brother. Man, I'm, I appreciate you having me. Well, we got to do more. This is the wow. prelude. And there's a whole lot of other things I want to ask you. You know, um, <laughs> I know it's sold out. Can I still get a pair of tickets? Oh, Sway, you got VIP. I got VIP? You, you got that? VIP. You hear that, Heather? All the, all the, you said oh, wait you a minute, you know, because all the VIP tickets are sold out. I think we got the, the top part that's still available for people. Okay. But the VIP sold out, so we just going to make a couple more, you know, for, mm -hmm. you, you okay. know, for the team. Thank you. Yes, pull up please. On us, please. Thank you. Okay. Maybe. Thank you. you know, we can't say who the special guest, but it's going to be special. It's going to be something special. You know what I'm saying? And he definitely don't pop out a lot, so... 
it's going to be yeah it's going to be legendary it's going to be historic i can't tell you enough how how proud i am of um all that you're accomplishing how motivated and inspired i am by you thank you brother uh continue success i know your history i know your family's history yes, and uh man you are excellent representation of who we can be at our highest level. Yes, sir. So continue success. Sway got right. the answers. Come on, man. Come on. You already Sway know. got the answers, y'all. Sway got the answers. Don't play with said it. it. Come on. Yeah. Don't play with it, all right? Okay. <laughs> Tell them how they can reach you if they don't know already. Um, <clears throat> They can go to the Instagram and YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Go to 19keys slash tour, 19keys.com to tap in. If you want to get some of them high-level conversations in you, go to high-level conversations on YouTube and change your life. Yeah.